way, before we get into this, I just want to specify that this is an edited version of the Paralogue tier list that was originally streamed on the channel, so if you've already seen that one, there's no need to watch this one too. It's just had a lot of the fluff and the downtime taken out and just made a much better viewing experience. Thanks. So today we will be tiering every paralog in the game. It's going to be tiered based on basically just how much I like the paralog overall. Pretty much anything can factor into it. It's just how much I like doing the paralog and how much I like the paralog's existence. This tier list was voted for by the channel patrons. There's a link in the description if you want to have your say. There's a vote every month to decide the next tier list we will do. It's for tiers two or higher. So yeah, if you want to have your say, you can do that too. Where relevant, this is considering the maddening difficulty, so that will factor into it. It's also considering a new game, not new game plus. And I think that's the only thing that really matters. No pagan altar, no grinding. Don't think those are relevant here, but in case they are. These are ordered in the order that basically they, they appear in. They're ordered in time order, so we're going to have all the part 1 ones first and all the part 2 ones. So I've changed the tier names. We've not got the usual S through F. I've just sort of made it clearer that this is more of an opinion-based tier list rather than a... This is good and this is bad. This is just like, I like this. This gives me a frowny face. And we're also using the characters to represent the paralogues in case that wasn't obvious. So the character there is the character for that paralogue. I've only included one character for each one, um, but it should make it fairly obvious, I think. Without any further ado, let's crack on. And first up, we've got Dadu whose paralogue is War for the Weak. This is obviously quite an important paralogue to do if you're in the blue lines, because if you don't do this, the dude dies. Um, spoiler alert. The dude dies in part two of the game if you don't do this. So it's obviously quite important to do, otherwise you lose a unit, and I believe it's the only paralogue that does that in the game. I can't think of anything else that's anywhere close to as impactful. That at least gives it some weight to doing it. You don't get great things from this, although it is a pretty early extra large bouillon, which is nice. The scaling rewards are always cool. The map itself is fairly standard. I don't really like the Battle in the Mountains map. It's a bit Blair, but it's not the worst. I think you only get eight units on this as well. Let me just double check that real quick. Yeah, you do. You only get eight units on this map, which is a bit, a bit odd. Um, it's probably some of the least egregious green units in the game as well. That's probably worth noting. As far as green units go, these ones aren't too bad. Um, they're, they're pretty okay. Otherwise, this map would be fairly hellish. I personally quite enjoy this map. The battalion is also quite good for prot stacking. That is true. I do, yeah, I do quite enjoy this map just overall. I think it's just a pretty fun one. I like the conditional rewards. It gives you a reason to try and kill more things so that you actually do get benefits from participating in more of the map, which is good. I'm going to put this in. I don't think it's anything too special. The map itself is fairly standard outside of that. Um, it's also the earliest available paralogue in the game, which is nice. I'm going to put it in. It's all right. It's all right. They work against you too. Yeah, they do. So they will uh, They will kill the, the Duska soldiers that you need to kill. The only paralogue where green units are threatening. Oh, you just wait. There are a lot of paralogs where green units are threatening. Not in the way you think they're threatening, but they're very threatening. <laughs> they're threatening to you anyway, to the player. Yeah, I think all around this one, it's all right. It's a solid paralog. I'm never upset to be doing this, but it's it's not great either. I'm not. It's not like I'm looking forward to doing War for the Week. It's, it's okay. I, I quite like a lot of the the premise around this one more than actually playing the map itself. Um, like the whole saving the do thing is it's kind of cool. I like how it's just quite impactful feels quite important to do um, It's also the only way to get the talisman shield outside of the pagan altar, I guess um, Which is cool. I mean, it's not great, but it's, it's unique. It's cool So the forgotten this is Sylvain's paralogue and you get a buttload of stuff from doing this There is so much in this map that you can get from all the enemy thieves uh, a lot of it's quite useful as well. You can get an energy drop, a speed ring, um, a magic staff, all quite good. Advanced seal's okay. And then for beating the map, you get uh, a talisman. You get the Lance of Ruin if you don't already have it, but you probably will. But if you don't, you you get the Lance of Ruin. That's that's okay. You get the Gautier Knights. Cool. Uh, you get some Bouillons. There's also a short spear and a goddess ring on the map. It's definitely not a bad paralogue at all. I like the split deployment. That's kind of cool. Like, I, li I like when it just divides where you're placed. I think it just makes for some interesting decisions. Route maps are generally better than defeat commanders because they're less skippable. And defeating the commanders on this one stops the thieves escaping, which is always, like, it's kind of fun. Um, I, 
think this one's actually pretty solid. I think it becomes a lot... It feels very different when you're doing it in, like, blue lines compared to anything else, but I can't quite put my finger on why. I don't know if it's alright or mostly enjoyable. I think it's another... It's alright. It's alright. I like it a little bit more in terms of actually playing the map than War for the Week. I don't think it's anything incredible, but it's a fun paralogue. I don't think there's anything too wrong with it. I'd say it's leaning on the positive end of the spectrum, but I don't think it's... You know, I'm not, like, thrilled to be doing it. Definitely has some upsides. Okay, so next up, Rumored Nuptials. The Ingrid and Dorothea Paralogue. I don't know if this is a popular opinion or not, but I don't really like ALL as a map. I think it's just mostly kind of... bad. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I think it's even worse Like if you chose to do this early because you're less likely to have flyers, which make the map a lot more bearable. I'm really not huge on this map. It holds it back quite a lot. I think the actual like premise of this Paralogue, like the, the route or escape... Um, with potentially infinite reinforcements. It's kind of cool. The map's quite wide as well, which could make for something quite interesting. Like, the enemy groups are very split, so clearing it quickly would actually be kind of tedious. Um, well, not necessarily tedious, but, like, difficult, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Um, it gives you Lewin. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it does give you an early heal. Uh, it's not that early healing stuff. You can already have... Oh, wait, no, it's a healing stuff, not a magic stuff. You're right. Um, yeah, it is an early healing stuff, actually. I was thinking of magic stuff from, um, from Chapter 6. You get a couple of other things as well. Obviously, if you have Ingrid as a party member, you get the Galatea Pegasus Company and Lewin. And if you have Dorothea, you get a Goddess Ring, which is a very disproportionate level of rewards. You either get a really good Battalion and a Lance, or you get a Ring. Obviously, you can get both, but it's very, very disproportionate. It actually does affect it quite a lot. Like, if you're only doing this with Dorothea, this is probably Blair. If it was the Dorothea variant, I'd probably put it in Blair, but with the Ingrid variant counted in, I think it's not bad. The rewards are really solid, the map holds it back quite a lot, but the premise of the paralogue is okay, and I think it's fairly decently balanced. There's nothing on this that, like, frustrates me, right? There's nothing about this that particularly, like, aggravates me or upsets me. It's just a bit of a bad map. Like, that's the, the biggest negative it's got going against it, which kind of sucks, but it's... It's not all bad. It's There's positives there too. And the, the negative isn't as bad as some of these are going to be. So next up, Land of the Golden Deer. Obviously very well known for its reward, Thiasus. Um, an excellent reward to get as a part of this as a part of this paralogue. Very, very useful indeed. It's also the earliest access you get to the Devil Sword, I believe. Which, very powerful sword, really useful on uh, like Soul Blade users and things like that. The biggest issue this map has is it's a really easy skip. But I'm not necessarily sure that's problematic. Um, I think, like, an option to skip it isn't necessarily terrible. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know quite how I feel to, like, judge, like, skippability, but it is a really easy skip, and that does deserve mention. But if you play this map, like, normally, I actually think it's a really, really fun map. I'm a bit of a fan of defense maps anyway. I think the Pegasus Knights, like, flanking your, your spot, Makes for quite an interesting, like, dynamic on the map if you don't skip it. Like, do you want to send just a small squad to kill Acheron? Because you're always kind of in danger of them reaching the exit. Um, it's definitely more interesting than a lot of defense maps that have previously been in other Fire Emblem games. Um, which have typically been fairly mediocre. I think this is quite fun. It's also, like, not easy if you do it Chapter 7. Like, which is the earliest you can do it. And you would want to do it early for Thiasus. Um, and also the Devil Sword is good. It's definitely not an easy map, which I think adds to it. Like, I think that makes it very fun. It's like, if you want to do it early and get the rewards, it's hard. Which makes sense, because the rewards are really good for the point in time. I think this is mostly enjoyable. Um, I could actually see it going up. I don't know. We'll see how it. We'll see how the tier list pans out. Um, I'm not sure if anything ends up in the top tier. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I haven't really thought about it too much in advance. I try not to when I do these. I try to think about them, like, when I'm here so that I can voice my thoughts. But I think overall, this one's mostly enjoyable, at least. I do always look forward to playing it to an extent. Um, I think the only real downside of it is it feels a little bit mandatory because the reward is Thiasis. And because it's only accessed through Lauren's, it makes Lauren's a bit of a mandatory recruit. Which is, like, I wish this had another method of access, I guess is what I'm saying. I wish it was a two-unit thing because of how good the reward is. Like, Ash Catherine for the boots, which we'll get to later. Like, when the reward is this good, I wish there was a second point of access for the Paralogue to get that reward. I guess that's probably the only real... Apart from how easy it is to skip, that's the only real criticism I have of it. Yeah, having to, having to have Lawrence to get into it is a little bit annoying, like, minorly. 
Sword and Shield of Seros. I do not like this paralog. I think it's really annoying. There is a massive lack of clarity regarding the reinforcements and like when they spawn, what causes them to stop spawning. Like in most maps where the bosses is where the enemies will spawn from. And when you kill that boss, those enemies stop spawning. But there's like three bosses and they're all very close to each other and they're all close to where the enemies spawn. And it's, um, it's very unclear. One of the spawns is also a pack of wyvern riders, which keep flying into the pack, into the, the, the village you're trying to defend. And it just means you have to basically just relegate a unit to sniping wyvern riders for the entire map to get the, the large bouillon and the seraph robe, which is just annoying. Like, I don't really think that's fun. And the split spawn is fairly okay. That's a fairly okay part of it. I don't mind that too much. Apart from the fact that three of your units literally just spawn in the middle of the town for no reason. There's there's no reason to put them in the middle of the town. It's really dumb. I don't know why they put three units just so far away from the way the action starts. It's just annoying. I don't like this paralog at all. I haven't even mentioned the boss. So at a certain point, the boss just starts sprinting away. And I, I don't get it. I don't... It's, it's just annoying. It's just such an annoying paralog. Alois is another good point. He comes with no combat arts and a steel axe with, like, no hit stacking abilities. So he just misses a lot. He can take a couple of hits. He's not useless on the chapter, but he's definitely not good. This is frowny face. This is a frowny face map. Um, the other thing is, like, you could maybe justify a map. I don't necessarily think this map is hard. That's the thing. I was going to say you can justify a map being hard if the rewards are good, but the rewards aren't that good. Like, the Seraph Robe is the best thing. But I don't even think this is hard. I just think it's annoying. Like, it's just a... Like, we did this on our most recent stream playthrough, and we did it first time relatively smoothly. I think we only pulsed, like, once. But it just wasn't fun. <laughs> it was just an annoying map to play. But yeah, Soldier Shield of Seraphs is bad. Get rid of it. Okay, this one's going to be divisive, isn't it? This is going to be, this is going to be a doozy. Black Market Scheme. This is the Balthus Happy Paralogue that is difficult. If you do it when it first shows up, it's, um, it's really rough. The longer you wait to do it, the easier it gets, which sounds really obvious, but it's quite incredible how much it scales down. Like, it, it gets significantly easier just with stats and classes. I really, really, really like the deployments on this map. I really like spreading all your units out quite far away from each other and sort of like you have that little clump in the bottom right with by left, Balthus and Happy. But outside of that, your, your units are very spread out. And I think that's a lot of fun. I think it's a really fun mechanic, you know, putting your priest like at the top to tank all the mages because they have a high resistance and everything like that. I think it makes it really enjoyable. It does also have good music. I'll give you that. That is true. I actually enjoy playing this paralogue now. When I play this paralog now, like, even if I do it early, I think it's a lot of fun. I think the big issue with this paralog is that it's so unclear what will cause those ambush reinforcements to spawn. And when if you spawn them when you're not prepared for them, you kind of just die. And that's bad. That's, that's just not good. It's not very transparent with sort of what's about to come and kill you. I don't even think there's any hinting that there will be a boatload of reinforcements, let alone when they come or what causes them. Um, that's the biggest criticism I have of the map. But I think after your first time playing it, or like after your first couple of tries of it, it genuinely does become very fun. And I do usually look forward to playing this one, but I can't deny that I look forward to it now. I definitely didn't when I first started playing, and it definitely was frustrating the first couple of times. So I think with that in mind, it's hovering between here. I'm going to go mostly enjoyable. I do enjoy Black Market Scheme. Um, the rewards aren't great either, but I genuinely don't care. Like, if the paralog is fun, I don't really remind the rewards not being great. It's also completely like, okay, let me rephrase that. Providing you have the DLC, it's completely free to access. You don't need to recruit anyone who, like, is out of the way. It's recruiting units who are completely freely available, which I think is a benefit to it. You know, you don't have to recruit... Uh, a, a, this might be really personal to me, but it will factor in. I don't like recruiting students who I would be fighting later of the, later in the game if I don't want to use them. So recruiting someone like Lawrence just to do his paralogue, and I know he leaves but in a lot of routes, but like recruiting someone like Lawrence just to do his paralogue is something I don't like doing. So I'm just going to throw that out there. So not having to do that, like recruiting units who are free to recruit is nice. I, I appreciate that side of it. Um, but yeah, overall, I think Black Market Scheme is a lot of fun. It's really difficult the first few times you play it. There's something else about this map, which is like... And we did this recently on stream. 
But when you, like, wait until chapter 11 to do this map, and it's just so easy, it feels so cathartic. Like, it feels so good to just breeze through Black Market Scheme. Something about doing it to this map in particular just feels nice. Uh, I don't know if it's just because it definitely kicked my ass the first couple of times I played it, and that's just, like, burned into my brain. But just... When this map's easy, it feels good. And that definitely gets it an extra an extra bonus point for sure. Tales of the Red Canyon. So this map is really notable for a couple of things. First of all, it is completely free. You can literally just do this from chapter 8 onward. You don't need any recruits. You don't need anything. It's basically Byleth's Paralogue. You know, that's a positive thing. It also gives access to the Knowledge Gem. And I like the fact that the Knowledge Gem is in a chest. I think that's a, an interesting dynamic on the map because you want to get it quickly, but the way the map's set up, getting it quickly might not be ideal. Um, it really benefits flyers, which isn't something flyers needed, but it's cool. The big issue I have with Tales of the Red Canyon is I think the monster-only maps are really boring. Not in the sense that they're not challenging or they're just unfun or anything like that. I just don't find it interesting to only be killing monsters. I much prefer when the monsters are mixed in with other enemies. And that's not to say the map as a whole is boring, I just think the enemy selection is boring. Let me make that clear. Yeah, it's not that I think, like, the entire map is is a boring map to play. I think there's a lot of interesting things going on with it, with, like, the reinforcement triggers and things like that. But the enemy selection could have been more interesting. Uh, possible hot take. Ashen Wolves Pyrologues are both solid blettier. The wild amount of reinforcements that come in make it way too tedious for me. That's absolutely fair if you feel that way, and I could completely see it. I will fully appreciate that, um... I'm not necessarily coming into this from the perspective of someone who's only played one or two runs. So, like, the fact that I know when reinforcements spawn in and things like that absolutely does skew my opinion, and I fully acknowledge that. So if you think, like, something like a black market scheme is lower because it's tedious, frustrating, and things like that, I can completely see why. That's absolutely understandable. Back to Tales of the Red Canyon. I like the Knowledge Gem rewards. Divine Pulse is a cool reward as well. You obviously get a bunch of ores on the map as well, which are rewards in and of themselves. But you get rewarded for those by, like, full clearing the monsters, which is interesting. It adds a bit of extra depth to killing the monsters. I mean, it's always there when you kill monsters, but when monsters are the only enemy you're looking for anything you can get, really. It's always available. I'm gonna put it in not bad. I I'm not a huge... I just, I just wish there was more enemy variety. I just wish there was... I mean, I know that there's wolves and chickens and the big turtle, but they're all monsters. They all feel very similar. At least to me, when I'm fighting them, they all feel very similar. The wolves having pass is also just annoying, because I forget they have pass. And yes, that's entirely personal to me, but it's my list. So, um, yeah, the wolves having pass just cannot stick in my head for some reason. It's just something I really struggle to remember whenever I play this. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put it in not bad. I'm never, like, upset to be doing this paralogue. Especially because the rewards are so good. Okay, so let's talk about True Chivalry. True Chivalry is a perfectly fine map that's ruined by green units. And that is pretty much the simplest way to put it. There are two problems with the green units on this map. One of them is called Rodrigue. Rodrigue likes to die. He's a big fan of running into enemies and dying. Um, he will also sometimes use his lance instead of aura or the other way around for no reason. Just to get himself killed. The other green unit problem is the fact that the villager green units will just run headfirst into enemies. The thing is, the thing is with true chivalry, that all the focus gets drawn onto the green units, like as to why this paralogue isn't particularly good. I think the bigger issue is that even without the green units being really dumb, like let's say the green units were just standard green units, which uh, that is being really dumb, but let's assume the green units weren't problematic, let's put it that way. The map's still just not very interesting. I just don't think it's a particularly great map, even without the the green units. It can be skipped. That is a good point. And this is probably an occasion where I think it being able to be skipped is to its benefit. Correct me if I'm wrong as well, but I think this is probably the map with the most paralogs on it. Like, this map has, like, four I can think of, which doesn't help its cause. Um, Sylvain's is on this map. Annette's is on this map, I think. Um, this one is obviously on this map. And I'm sure there's another one. This is Blair. And it makes me sad because I love Felix, one of my absolute favourite characters in this game, but this Paralogue's Blair. Skipped with Bolting, the best spell, no less true. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to put this one in Blair. I just, I don't, it, it's not Aloise tier because I quite like the rewards. You do get the Aegis Shield from it, you get the Freldarius Soldiers, both great protection tanking rewards, and I'm a bit of a fan of protection tanking, I just think it's fun. Uh, but the Wodal's really nice as well, the Extra Large Bouillon is nice. 
Um, so at least for the slog, you get some some decent award rewards. It's not fun to play, and that's it. That's its biggest problem. It's just not fun to play. Okay, so this is actually I'm really glad this one is next to True Chivalry. Because this is another map which, in my opinion, suffers from really dumb green units, right? The villagers will literally just run straight into the enemies. And it's really annoying. But the thing is, outside of that, I think this map's fun. I enjoy the rest of this map. And I can't quite explain what it is, but the actual map is fun to play. I like the way it splits your party. I like the way there's sort of multiple routes for both of those parties to take. I think there's a lot of interesting decisions to be made when you're playing this map. And... The, this is a map that's held down by its by its green units. Also, it took me like two plays of this map to realize it was on the same map as Land of the Golden Deer because they used the map so differently. And I think that's really interesting, the fact that it's a defense map in one stage, an offense map in the other, and like where you were defending is where the boss is. I think it's just quite good map usage. Um, it, it, although it is a reused map, it feels a bit more unique in its use cases, I guess. But yeah, I think this is, all around, I think it's a good paralog that's held down by green units. And the green units are really annoying. But the green units, I think all they affect is the Booyon, is that correct? Oh no, they affect, okay, they affect the Booyon and they affect the Short Axe, Short Spear and Killer Bow. I don't care. Um, It feels a lot less bad to let these green units die. It also gives the Lester Mercs. It gives the Lester Mercs regardless of what you do. So if these green units die, they die, and that's kind of okay with that. So I wish it was a double boss kill. That would be cool if it was a double boss kill. I'm going to put it in this alright. I think it's alright. It's definitely not a bad one. I enjoy playing the map quite a lot. It's just held back by dumb green units again. You need to protect them for like the... To get the extra large Booyon. And to get the short axe, short spear and killer bow. But you don't need to protect them for the battalions. Oil and water. I don't know if this one's going to be controversial. But I actually quite enjoy this map. It's another one kind of similar to Black Market Scheme. Where the first couple of times I played it. It definitely frustrated me. But now I actually really look forward to this map in a lot of situations. I think it's enjoyable. Saving Private Manuela is a lot of fun. I don't know why. I just really enjoy that aspect of this map. I really like the limited deployment slots. You only get... I think you only get to bring four units by choice. Um, I think you have to bring Hanuman, Manuela, and Byleth. You might not have to bring Byleth. I might be wrong about that. But either way, you only get seven units and two of them are Hanuman and Manuela, which is kind of cool. It does give the Rapier, which is really cool. It gives the McQueal Evil Repelling Co. It gives the Index Sword Fighters. And it gives the Rapier. And the XP Gem. I can't remember which one I say first. I said first. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, it gives four really good rewards. The rewards on this map are honestly goaded, and I think it's really fun. It's another map where I feel like you benefit a lot from doing it early. Uh, well... You do because the experience gem, but like the McQueen Lever Repelling Co. and the Index Sword Fighters don't play that much of a role early, but like the experience gem's really nice, so is the Rapier. But doing it early is also difficult. It's another one that's kind of similar to Black Market Scheme to me, where it used to annoy me, but now I actually really look forward to playing it. I think it's a really fun map. This map really changes based on whether Manuela is in Peg or not. True. It's also a really easy skip, which is nice. I think this is mostly enjoyable, honestly. I think this is a fun map. Also, I don't know if anything's going in always look forward to. I'm looking at this list of paralogs left in front of me. And, um, yeah, it's, it's not looking good. If you skip, it's a lot harder to get the rapier and the gem. I agree, and that's why I think it's a good skip. Like, if you skip the map, you're punished for it. And that's a good thing. Um, the rapier and the experience gem are very valuable rewards. And skipping the map makes the map a lot easier and lets you get the battalions a lot easier. But it, um, it means you miss out on those other rewards, and that's good. Um, well, not necessarily miss out, but it's harder to get them while skipping. I'm going to move Land of the Golden Deer up to always look forward to, because I think I, I like it a cut above these. Um, the only thing I think I really held it back for was the the fact it was such an easy skip, and it required you to recruit Lawrence, which compared to the problem I think these two maps have, are much more minor. I think it warrants being a tier above those two maps, and it's nice to have something in that top tier, I'm not going to lie. Cursed Relic. This gives you the fetters of drone me. That's probably the most notable thing about it. An incredibly unique and really cool reward. Giving Kanto to a non-Kanto unit. Really cool. Big fan of it. I think it's a very good incentive to play a chapter that is quite difficult. I don't think it's as bad as Black Market Scheme. I don't think it's close to being as bad as Black Market Scheme. Um, I think it's much more doable. It has some really weird enemy placement. Like the three guys who are north of your spot. I rotate the map. Is it always north? Let me check the map. Yeah, it is always north. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the three guys who are, like, above your spawn are just really out of the way in an annoying fashion, but like, you don't have to kill them, so... 
doesn't really matter. Oh, you do, because it's right the enemy. Never mind, you do have to kill them. Uh, but yeah, it has some really weird enemy placement. That's probably my biggest criticism of it. Other than the fact that, again, Duke Girth is not as problematic as other green units. Like, he's not Rodrigue because he can fight. He still gets in your way. And he has a... I don't know if it's just me. He has a huge habit of just standing where I want to stand. Or just taking really weird routes to places. But... That's just green units being green units. The only map that specifically punishes you for not using stride, that is true, like it is very, very important to have movement tools on this map, stride, flyers, warp, and the likes. Um, that is a very good point. I enjoy this map. I don't enjoy it as much as Black Market Scheme. I think this is also a really good use of monsters. I'm gonna say that. I think this is one of the, the more interesting uses of monsters in the game. Yeah, you can use rescue to, to bring the Duke out. Um, there's a lot of interesting things you can do on this map, for sure. You can also stride the Duke, which is fun. I'm still going to put it in mostly enjoyable. I still think it's the same tier. I don't enjoy it as much as Black Market Scheme, and I think I prefer Royal and Water too, but I do enjoy this map. It's a, it's a fun one to play. The rewards are cool as well. Giving the Fetters is really nice. And again, it's another one that's pretty much completely free to access as long as you have the DLC. You don't need to go out of your way to get into it. Uh, the same is true of Oil and Water, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that, but like Hanuman and Manuela are such free recruits. You also get the Nouvelle Flying Core from this as well. Outside of the Fetters is a really good reward. It's fairer than Black Market Scheme. That's definitely true. I agree it's more fair. I, I do completely agree that Black Market Scheme can feel very, very cheese when you don't know what's coming. Personally, I I mean, I do know what's coming and I really enjoy playing it because of that, but I do completely get that point. Oh, this is something I didn't talk about with the Lauren Paralogue. I'm about to bash this map for it, but I think it is much worse on this map. But okay, I will get into that in a bit. Falling Short of Heaven. There's a lot to say about this map. It's done by Ash and Catherine, so you do have an option to do it in Crimson Flower, where you can't get Catherine or Silver Snow. Uh, you just have to recruit Ash, who is a relatively easy recruit, I guess, so it's not too bad, but I still don't really like having to recruit a character, but it's okay, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. It gives you the boots. The boots are a great reward. I think they're a really good reward for a Paralogue, and I think they're quite a, a good reward for a, an awkward Paralogue. I guess, shall we say, a less desirable Paralogue, because you get well rewarded for doing it. Um, you also get a crit ring on this map, which is really nice as well. They're another useful tool. Uh, there's a secret book as well. Now. Hmm. <laughs> I don't like Fog of War. I think it's a really dumb mechanic that I wish they would stop bringing it back, but they don't. I really don't like Fog of War. However, let me explain why I really don't like Fog of War on Falling Short of Heaven. So this is a defense map, which means that at the end of the enemy phase on turn 10... The map ends, and you win. The problem is that if a unit who isn't essential dies on the turn 10 enemy phase, you can't Divine Pulse. You just beat the map. Which means that if you have Divine Pulses left, it doesn't matter. If you don't want that unit to die, you have to restart the whole map. And when combined with Fog of War, this is a really annoying mechanic, <laughs> which I just despise. I will say the last couple of times I've done this map, it's not been anywhere close to as bad as it used to be for me. So that's sort of making it feel a bit fairer. Because I used to consider this map to be really hard. Um, but like obviously the more familiar you get with Fog of War placements and things like that, the easier it becomes. But in general, the fact that it ends on an enemy phase with Fog of War, I just think is horrible, horrible design. It gives a really good reward. It's pretty easily accessible. And I think the bulk of playing this map, the whole protecting Raya thing, is actually pretty cool. Um, it also gave us that incredible clip of Rhea getting absolutely gibbed by an assassin, which was really funny. But the ending on the enemy phase of a Fog of War map, I just think is a really dumb mechanic. I, I don't know if they just didn't think it through or whether that was intentional, but it's terrible and I'm putting it in Blair. Just for that alone. Outside of that, it's actually not too bad. Apart from the fact that the green unit of Ash is just unnecessarily terrible for no reason. Uh, the green unit Ash is just horrifically bad and also massive bait because you think, you're oh, I'll use him to kill the Pegasuses, but he's terrible at killing the Pegasuses. He both can't really hit them and doesn't kill them when he does. So that's annoying. But yeah, this map is... It's got its upsides. There's things I like about it, but the downsides, the fog of war, ending on an enemy phase, those two things in conjunction, it's, it's got to go in Blair for me. The enemies also do have paths. That is true. The enemies on the fog of war map have paths. An ocean view is a really weird paralogue for me to judge. Because typically I really dislike sand in the Fire Emblem games. Usually just I just find it a really frustrating mechanic. I think there's more interesting things they can do than making the map really slow. Um, in terms of having different terrain. However, I actually think it's really well used here. I think the, the, the additional path down the right for like your cavalry units to go. 
you've got like the sandy path in front of you and then the, the, the ocean out on the left, which makes really good use of your flyers, but also you can walk over it. I think it's just a really interesting use of that terrain. Setef is also a lot of fun on this map. I like when they give you a little preview of a unit. Setef is really interesting on this map. They do it with Alois, but the preview of Alois makes him look terrible. Um, the preview of Setef makes him look really good and make me look forward to using him later down the line. The rewards on this are also great. Caduceus is obviously an excellent tool. Keyhole Wyvern Co., really, really good. Spear of a Sal, very interesting. The Black Pearl, actually pretty solid. Levin Sword, always nice to have. Actually, this is really good. I'm going to put this top of it's all right. I was going to go below the dues, but the more I think about it, this probably looks actually fun. I use this map for boss abuse, get a few people to level 20. You can do that too. I don't know, I just think this map's like quite actually enjoyable to play. Um, and the little preview you get of Setef is nice. I'm still not a huge fan of sand, but I think this is one of the better uses of it, providing you a few different paths and like things like that. I think it's interesting. I also don't think uh, an ocean view is like frustrating at all. Like, it can be a bit slow at times, for sure. But I've never, like... Nothing in this map has ever, like, actually annoyed me. Like, or, like, anything like that. Like, I think it's actually a pretty calm map to play. It's weirdly, seemingly appropriate. Should I rank this differently for the Anna variant and the Anna and Yuritsa variant? Eh, probably not. It's... It does differ a lot, but it's... It's just not that big of a... It's... It's going in the same place, pretty much. Secret Merchant. I really like the idea of having a bunch of enemies with drops and letting you just kill as many as you want to get as much as you want, right? To get a bunch of stuff. Some of it's quite interesting. The Venom weapons, a whole boatload of money, things like that. Hammer, um, a horse slayer. Cool stuff, right? You can get some nice stuff. Some elixirs dotted around as well. All really cool to be able to, to, be able to pick them up. And I quite like that. I like when the game rewards you for interacting with it more. It's kind of similar to why I like villages and armories and things like that in past Fire Emblems. The problem with this map is I just think it's really annoying. The ambush spawns on this map are pretty much the worst there are in the entire game, which is fairly substantial. Um, I think this is the most annoying the ambush spawns ever are. The bow knights are unbearably good, especially for the part one variant of this map. Like, they're so... It's so just like out of pocket for them to throw bow knights and paladins and grapplers and all that stuff at you it's so early it is it's a bit absurd it feels weird to say i don't like this map because it isn't true but i think this is probably the worst like positioning you get on this map um the best positioning you get on this map by the way is just the four stalks battle i think that's that's pretty much just true um the four stalks battle has really good positioning on this map falling short of heaven has pretty mediocre positioning on this map but it fits the map this is i don't like this bottom spawn feels really awkward also a couple of your units spawn with forests in front of them towards the enemies which is awkward and horrible i really like the premise of this map i just don't like playing it oh this is really tough is between not bad and blur i think it's not bad i honestly um, it's not available on silver snow because of the stupid uretsa thing which they didn't need to do why did they put Yuritsa in this paralogue? Yeah, if you could spread your units out a little more, that would make this map a this would, it would make this paralogue a lot better. I still think it's not bad. It has so many flaws. This is the highest I think a map this flawed has been. I think it's got more flaws than Felix's map, but I really, really like the premise of it. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and it, it does give me, like, it does draw me back a bit to sort of, like, older Fire Emblem with things like villages and arenas and shops that you visited on a map to... to get extra rewards. I like maps that give me that things, and this does it in spades. Um, the more you do on this map, the more you're rewarded, and I really like that. I think it's a... It's actually, like, fun. It's just the ambush spawns are so unbearable, and the enemies are so just strong for the point in time. Dividing the world is a very odd map. I don't think it's bad. I'm just going to start by saying that, which is never a good sign. I don't think this is a bad map at all. It's just really big. <laughs> I don't know if this is just me, but it feels weirdly sparse and, like, divided. It almost feels like ALL. Honestly, that's the best way I can describe it. It feels like ALL to me. Um, like, it just feels like it's really tedious to actually navigate around the map. Which, look, I understand I'm a fan of FE4, so that's going to sound really weird to say is a bad thing. But it does. It feels really slow and tedious. Outside of that, I think there's a pretty unegregious use of green units. They're, they're not great, but they're better than a lot of others they're not they're not rodrigue 
Um, they're not even Raphael levels of bad. I definitely don't think this is a, a terrible paralogue. It gives you a Fry Kugel as well, and the Goneril Valkyries, and the Hexlock Shield. Okay, that's pretty cool, actually. I really enjoy the way the party split. The spawns are really cool. I do agree with that. The spawns on this map are very interesting, and quite well done. I, I do agree. The thing is, I like this map in other situations. I think I would prefer this as a part two map, honestly, which, I mean, in a couple of units we will get to. I also think it does have that problem, right? Like, the, the other variant of this map, which feels extremely similar. I think it's just a lot better. <laughs> um, but... The enemy distribution is not that balanced. Well, that's a very good way to put it. That is a very good way to put it, Richard. It just doesn't feel... Like, it feels so... Like, I have to send units down to the bottom side of it. But then those units don't do anything for the rest of the game. There's forests everywhere. There's walls everywhere. Like, it's just a really awkward map. And... it's It's got that going against it. I actually think, like, the green unit element of this map is actually fairly okay. Um, the party split is cool. A Hilda Cyril map in general is kind of cool, I guess. It gives you Freikugel, it gives you Goneril Valkyries, Hexlock Shield. Its rewards are pretty solid. I'm going to put it top of not bad. This isn't quite as bad as ALL. It's pretty bad. I think that's okay, I think that's okay. I think that's a fine place for it to sit. Top of not bad is, um... I think it's okay. I don't think it's a bad map at all, but it's... It could definitely be better. Weather Veins of Foglund. So this map is really odd. First of all, I'm like, or this map, I mean this paralogue. This paralogue is really odd. Parts of it are really, really cool. And parts of it are really boring. Like, the fact that we're back on this map again. is one thing to give, you know, multiple units the same map for their paralogue. I fully understand that, right? But here's the thing, right? Let's take the map we were just talking about, for example. The Hilda Cyril map. You will never do the Hilda Cyril paralogue in the same playthrough as the Edelgard paralogue. It's not possible. You can't get the two units in the same route. This map is used for Sylvain, Felix, and Annette. They're all blue lions. At, at some point, someone had to realise, maybe we shouldn't put three paralogues in the same map in the same route that everyone who plays that route is going to encounter. Please. Like, just why? Like... <laughs> They, surely there were other maps they could have used. I do think this is an interesting use of it, to be fair. Much more so than Felix Paralogue. I like the little jail that they've got Annette and Gilbert in. I hate that it's Azure Moon only. That is true. Requiring Gilbert does mean it's Azure Moon only. Which means Annette can't get Crusher out of house. Actually, that's kind of bad. That is actually kind of annoying. Like, locking a Relic re weapon to route only is... Yeah, that's kind of bad. Not a huge fan of that, actually. <laughs> that's, that's relatively true. Hard to avoid using a kingdom map for someone from the kingdom. I mean, surely they could have used a different map for one of them. Just not three times, like... I also just don't think this map's very interesting to play. It's not terrible by any means, so I don't think it's a bad map. But it's... For a part two map, it's a little bit... Simple. I don't think there's anything interesting going on on this map other than just, like, kill the boss. There's really not much to say about this map. I don't think it's very interesting. It's Azure Moon only and it uses this map again. And this will be the third time you encounter it because the other two are part one. Do I think it's Blair? Crusher is a really cool reward. And the map isn't bad to play. I just think it's uninteresting. It's just boring. Yeah, it's not Blair. It's not Blair. I'm going to put it bottom of not bad because I don't think it's necessarily bad. I just think it's boring. It's uninteresting. It's it's there. I'll do this paralogue when it pops up, but I'm never like, yay, this paralogue, or even like remotely enjoying playing. It's just there. It's not a terrible map. It's just present. Insurmountable. So this takes place on the same map as Hilda and Cyril's Paralogue, but I think this is a much more better variant of it. I think the enemies are a lot better spread out. I think the defense style of map here makes a lot more sense than, like, defending a bunch of random green units. Um, because you don't have to sort of slog through the terrain as much. And I think the fact it has an Adair on it just makes it more interesting than random enemies. I think this is actually quite a decent use of Nadair as a as a boss. The rewards aren't as good, it has to be said. You get some, some stat boosters, you get an Aura Shield. And a silver shield and holsts chosen but it's well, you only get an aura shield if you steal it to be fair so you probably don't get the aura shield it's a fairly okay map to play i think this being later in the game helps it a lot too because you're more likely to have units that can like navigate the terrain or have long range attacks to sort of take advantage of the fact that the terrain's a little hard to get around i definitely don't think it's bad i think it's better than hilda's variant i don't think it's particularly great either it being Edelgard's Paralogue feels really weird to me too. Like, I wish we got something more Edelgardy. It's alright. Honestly, I think it's just alright. 
sort of relatively middle of the road. It's, it's inoffensive. I think it's better than Hilda's variant, notably. But it's, it's nothing particularly special. Tubert's Paralogue is just killing a bunch of monsters. It's not particularly interesting. It's like a, another bad... I was going to say a worse version, but I'm not even sure it's worse. It's just another bad version of Chapter 9. Um, the only thing that sort of makes this a little bit better is the, the deployment is a bit more interesting. Um, and I guess the green units are nicely scattered around too, but like... It's got the same problems as um, Tales of the Red Canyon, but without the things that make Tales of the Red Canyon that interesting, I think. You get the Arrow of Indra, which is a cool weapon, but it's it's not a knowledge gem, <laughs> um, to, to state the obvious. I just don't think it's quite as interesting. You also only... the rewards don't scale at all. Either you save half the Dark Bishops and you get the Arrow of Indra, or you don't and you don't get anything. Which, for me, is not very interesting. I think that could be... I think that's better done in other scenarios, like, for example, with the uh, the Raphael Paralogue. I think it's just much more interestingly done. It's not, a, it's not a horrible map, it's just really uninteresting. I don't have as much conviction about a lot of the Part 2 Paralogues, probably because I haven't played them as much. I played Part 1 ones a lot more. Um, I don't think it... I think it's worse than the Nets, I'll take that back. I was going to say I don't think it's worse than the Nets, but killing a bunch of monsters just... Especially at this stage of the game, killing a bunch of monsters isn't very interesting, because everyone has breaker skills... Like monster breaker skills. Not everyone, but a lot of units will. You have the Blessed Lance. It's just... It's just uninteresting, isn't it? Okay, so the Face Beneath. The Face Beneath is Mercedes and Caspar's Paralogue. Couple of things that are immediately off the bat kind of bad about this. First of all, having to recruit Caspar. It's really awkward. You can't be recruit support him. So having to do that is annoying. Uh, this Paralogue isn't available in Crimson Flower. Obviously, it wouldn't make any sense. Which is also not really great. Um, the secret reward is cool if Caspar defeats the Death Knight. That is definitely cool. The problem is, I don't think we needed another map where the Death Knight was the boss. Like, there are a lot of maps where the Death Knight is the boss. We didn't need another one. Like, I think this could be the, like, sixth or seventh time you're fighting the Death Knight in Azure Moon. Like, it's, it's a bit excessive. You don't need to fight him, but he's still the boss. Like, he is still... Like, just because it's a route map, it doesn't mean there is no boss. Like, it's not a kill boss map, but the map still has a boss. You do get some interesting things from this map, I guess. Like, it's kind of cool to get, like, the Rafael gem. It's just also the only way to get the Rafael gem, which means Yuritsa can't get the Rafael gem, which means he can't use it with his crest, which works with the Rafael gem. Accuracy ring is also cool if you can steal it from the Death Knight, which is, I mean, you'll take it if you can. Uh, Scythe of Sariel is also obviously a very cool reward. Yeah, I know he's optional, but he's still the boss. Just because an enemy is optional, it's still a there's, there's still a boss. Like if you're on a Acheron is optional on the the Lawrence Paralogue, he's still the boss of the map. Like uh, I'd take it over Rumored Nuptial. I think mm, would I? I don't think I would take it over Rumored Nuptials. I'm gonna mm, mm, no, I don't think I'd take it over Rumored Nuptials. I don't think I'd take it over. Mm, at least you fight more than just monsters on this. I'll take it over Tales of the Red Canyon. Yeah, it is also... Actually, this one is really awkward to access. I do actually agree with that. I'm going to bump it down below Tales of the Red Canyon for that. That is true. It is really out of the way. Like, if you wanted to do this, it is annoying. Okay, Legend of the Lake. Really cool rewards. Let's get that out of the way straight away. The Inexhaustible is really cool. Um, there's also a couple of things scattered around the map, which are quite nice. The Spirit Dust, an extra large bouillon. Um, as well as the, the couple of battalions you get at the end. Cool. Fog of War is bad. I, I, I don't enjoy Fog of War. It's just not fun to play around. I don't understand who does like Fog of War. Why do they keep putting Fog of War in these games? I'm trying to just, like, phrase how I feel about this map. I think it's really awkward to play. I think that's probably the best way to put it. Like, it just feels like a really strange map to play. It's a relatively unique map in and of itself. Is this used in anything other than this and Orcs Battles? My issue with Fog of War is that it makes it too hard. It's that I think Fire Emblem is, at its core, a tactical strategy game. And I can't make strategic decisions when I don't know where my enemies are. Uh, the boss is cool. I think the premise of the map is kind of cool. Uh, the rewards are cool. It definitely has some things going for it. I know I've said this for the past few. I just don't think this is a particularly great map to play. It might be due to the fact that a lot of these part two maps are like in the wind down of the game. And like at that period of time when you just sort of want to crack on with the actual story. At least I do. So I feel like a lot of these maps are just quite intrusive. Okay, it's better than Hubert's. It's better than Annette's. It's better than Anna's. It's better than Mercedes's. I'm going to put it there. It's a pretty, like, it's not a bad map at all. It's okay. It's fine. I'd say it's probably, like, a 
like a little bit better than average. Not overly so. It's, it's an okay map to play. The fact that you have lanes instead of an open plane makes the enemies more predictable. I mean, true, but like, here's my thing, right? Like, let's say I've got like a protection tank and I throw them in front of like the fog of war. I like, I can't, like, I can't even make the call that say like, oh, let's put this unit here to hold this because I don't know what enemy types are coming. I don't know what weapons they're equipped with. Like, anything like that. Okay, Foreign Land and Sky. I mean, what do you even say about Foreign Land and Sky? Is there any, like, actual reason to do this map? It just gives you three pretty mediocre battalions. Three battalions that are probably outclassed by this point in the game, honestly. Let me just check I'm not, like, forgetting anything with any of these, but I think they're pretty much all bad. They are pretty much all bad. Yep, okay, all bad. Apparently this map gives you the Bridged Mercenaries which is an E-rank battalion that gives plus one physical attack at base and plus three physical attack at max level. It's an onslaught battalion. It's a, it's an on, it's a basic onslaught battalion. Why does, it, why does it give you that? The Bridged Hunters actually gives you a pretty high avoid. I guess it's useful for using like grounded avoid stacking units. I personally don't, which is why I think these are, at least they're low impact for me. I wouldn't really use them. But I can see if you're going for one of those setups, like a dodge tank sword master or something, that, that could hold some value. Okay, fair enough. The part two paralogues really aren't great. Um, I'm just going to be completely honest. I don't think any of these paralogs are particularly good. It's just a boring map. The the map itself is actually quite interesting, but I don't I don't think this is the best use of it. Um, that's coming up next. It's just I have such I I don't even have an opinion. That's why I'm struggling so much here. I just don't have an opinion of this map. I honestly have so little to say about this this map. I just don't think it's very interesting. Isn't Hubert the boss if you do this out of... I'm only looking at the the Crimson Flower variant where you fight Catherine. Isn't Hubert the other boss? Because what this game needed is more fighting Hubert. This might be Blair. I just think this is a really... It's, it can't be Blair. It can't be... It's not on the same tier. These two maps actively annoy me and I think this is just terrible. With the Siege Day, he has me... Okay. Yeah, because what we needed to do is fight Hubert some more. This map is just so dull. It really sucks because I like Bernadetta, I like Petra. Petra's my favourite unit in the game, my favourite character in the game. This, I, I do not care about this paralogue. That is the harshest criticism I can give it. I do not care. It's Petra's paralogue, my favourite character in the game, and I don't care about it. That's literally the harshest criticism I can give it. It's so uninteresting. Okay, so, Forgotten Hero, the Marianne paralogue. I'm gonna say something, and people might disagree. I think this is probably the only good use of Fog of War in Fire Emblem Three Houses. I think this map uses it really well. It's still annoying, but it's annoying in a way that I find fun to play around within the context of saving Marianne. I enjoy it a lot in the context of this map, and I think this map is made better by it being Fog of War. That being said, the map does have other issues. So it's mostly pretty much just killing monsters, which is fairly boring even like especially at this stage of the game but it makes sense considering like you know it's marianne's power it makes sense for story reasons but it doesn't make killing monsters any more fun killing monsters in fog of war is also awkward it's not necessarily bad but it's awkward to play around uh, giving blood gang is cool like there's a giant shell there's a hexlock shield the rewards are okay blood gang is a little bit outclassed for the point in time when you get it but it's still cool to have it's a useful relic in certain situations thanks to beast fang it's above not bad. It's better than all of these. So let's just figure it out from there. I think I prefer it over these. I just wish there was more going on here. But like, I, I give it a lot of credit for being a good use of Fog of War. A Fog of War use that I don't just think like, oh, this map has Fog of War and it's okay. I think this map has Fog of War and it's actively fun. But yeah, I, I give this map a lot of credit for being a really good use of Fog of War. I don't think there are many really good uses of Fog of War. And I think this is one. I think it makes the map better that it's in Fog of War. So it can have that. Go, go for it, Marianne. I'm, I'm glad you have a decent paralogue. I'm proud of you. Okay, so first of all, Eternal Guardian, the the, the method of accessing this map. Uh, you need a C support with Rhea before part two of the game. And I think that's a really interesting way of, of accessing this. That's about the only interesting thing about this paralogue. That's not true, but it's, it's just kind of eh. It's not a terrible map, to be fair. You get the Seros shield from it, which is cool, I guess. Uh, I think this is route locked outside of Crimson Flower. I might be incorrect. I think you can do this in Golden Deer, Blue Lions, or Silver Snow. Uh, this map's really hard to judge because I don't think it's bad. I think it's bad for the point in time. Like, this is another... If this was in part one, I honestly might put it, like, reasonably okay and it's alright, because I don't think it's a terrible map to play. 
I just think it's a really, like, it's it's such a pace killer in the middle of part two when, like, the whole war is going on. It's, this just feels like it's just in the middle of it. I like the premise of, like, Rhea had some ancient defenses that she set up or whatever it was. I think that's kind of cool. But it's, it just feels really out of place for the point. I think I just don't like part two power logs in general. I think I just think they're a bit in the way. But it just feels like such a weird, like, weirdly placed map in the point in time. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I, oh, I don't know where to put this. It's not bad is the thing. Like, I have no issues with this power log apart from the fact it's just a bit of a pace killer. But playing it is fun. Like, it's not a bad map to play. It does interesting things with, like, the route split. Like, not the route. You know what I mean when I say route split, right? I don't mean, like, the route split as in the different routes in the game. I mean, route split as in the routes on the map you can take to navigate it. I like starting from this part of the map rather than the other way around. It's an interesting flip on Chapter 11. It's, it's good. I just don't like... I'm going to put it behind Edelgards. I, I don't mind the map. I just wish it was somewhere else in the, literally any other point in time. The golems are cool. Again, I like the, the theming a lot around the map with, like, Rhea having her ancient defenses or whatever. Like, I think it's kind of kind of neat. Also, the fact that the treasure Rhea left for them is the Saros shield is really disappointing. Like, I, I, I do wish it was a little bit more... <laughs> something punchier. You know what I mean? Like, something not the Saros shield. Oh, God. Sleeping Sand Legend. Huh? Oh, wow. Okay, until I just look at this map, I completely forgot this map had a third party in it. Genuinely, I did not remember that at all. Just that, that bit of information genuinely slipped my mind. And I watched Tegan play this the other day, so I, I, that had apparently left my mind very quickly. I like a lot of things about this map. And then you aggro the boss. And then the reinforcements come. And then everything just gets very sad. I think most of this map is fine. Sand kind of sucks. Um, actually, sand really sucks. Is this the only actual map that takes place in the desert? Like, outside of, like, quests? Am I right in saying that? I don't think it's any other map in the game. Sand is better than fog? I'd agree with that, yeah. Sand is better than fog. Sand's still annoying, though. Although, at least by this point in time, you're likely to have a lot of flyers, so it's not as bad. Flyers and majors are, like, fine on here. Has really bad ambush spawns. I do agree. The infinite flies can be horrible. I enjoy playing this map. This is the thing that's really sticking. Like, I understand there is a lot wrong with this map. Um, there's a lot I don't like about it, like, well, namely sand and really annoying reinforcements. But at the end of the day, I enjoy playing it. I wish it wasn't so empty. Like, there's a load of this map which is just nothing. That kind of sucks. I wish it just made the map a bit smaller, honestly. Do I think this is better than Edelgar's map? Probably not. This might just scrape into all right. I think it's like a, it's a fine... I enjoy playing the map. I can't really explain why, because on paper it's a map I don't think I'd normally like. But I think because of the point in time, you normally have a lot of flyers and mages. It makes the sand less unbearable than it normally is. Um, there's also like the little track that runs around it that isn't sand, which makes it a bit more, again, a bit more bearable. Even if you do have to walk in single file as if it's like FE4 or something. Yeah, the yellow units triggering the boss is kind of annoying, I agree. But like, I... It's weird because I definitely think there are some elements of this map that are actively bad. But on the whole, I enjoy playing it most of the time. I agree it's another one that probably gets better the more used to it you are and like the more you can deal with the reinforcements. Because they can definitely be frustrating. They are plentiful as well. I think it's like four white minerals right here. Which is problematic if they spawn when you're not prepared for them. But on the whole, I don't think it's a terrible map. It's, it's okay. I enjoy playing it, which is the most important thing, I suppose. I've literally just read the name of this map and then forgot it. Retribution. Okay. I think this map has one major, major, major problem. And outside of that, I think it's pretty cool. So the big problem is you need to recruit Ferdinand out of house to be able to... Actually, I guess you can do it in Silver Snow, right? Yes, it is. You can do it in Silver Snow. Um, so you don't actually have to recruit Ferdinand out of house. Okay, I'll take it back then. You, you, you can do it in Silver Snow, but like... You can't do it in Crimson Flower is the point I'm getting. I wish you could do this in Crimson Flower. I know it wouldn't necessarily make sense, but it would be cool if you could do this in Crimson Flower. But having to recruit Ferdinand to be able to do this with Lysithia is really annoying. I think this map would be much better as a part one parrot log. That's what I'm trying to get at. I wish this parrot log was better, would be better if there wasn't like this obligation to recruit Ferdinand in three or two thirds of its like instances. Um, I think it would be much better as a part one parrot log. Outside of that, I actually enjoy it quite a lot. 
Uh, it gives you some cool things. I think, like, the Arcane Shield, the Ordelia Sorcery Company. Things like that are really cool. A couple of um, other useful goodies scattered around the map. Uh, the Lance of Zoltan is actually a really big reward, too. That's very valuable, especially if you're using Ferdinand. Like, that's huge. Uh, the Evasion Ring, Secret Book, Talisman. All good. Lysithia's catalog is good in certain aspects, but lacks something. I had to agree with that. It, something about it feels unimpactful. But I have a similar feeling about pretty much... In fact, no, I'm not even going to qualify that. I've had the same feeling about every Part 2 Parrot Log. I think they're really in the way. Um, I, I just don't think Part 2 is suited for these Parrot Log battles. Like, in Part 1, it feels okay to be going out on expeditions to solve these random quests. But Claude is in the middle of a war and goes to fight a like basically a demigod that could just lose his entire army the war if he died like is it parts of it just feel really dumb <laughs> like um and i have the same issue here like it just feels like really out of place in part two of the game but i i've recognized that could just be me it might not be a problem for a lot of people boss skipping to make half of the enemies disappear is way safer than actually saving the civilians that's true but i think a lot of these maps are like made worse by skipping and things like that so don't know where to put this I think, okay, let me just, I think it's better than these. I think it's more fun to play than these maps. I think it's better than Claude's Paralogue because it's not got sand and annoying reinforcement. No. It's, I think it's better than Rayo's. I think it's better than Adel Gods. I don't think it's better than Dudu's. I think I'm just going to plant it there. Yeah, I think it's, it's fine uh, between Adel Gods and Dudu's. It's all right, but uh, I, I just really wish this was a part one Paralogue. I think it would be so much more interesting. Dimitri's Paralogue, the Silver Maiden. Shall we get the obvious thing out of the way? We don't need another paralogue where you have to fight Hubert. We we don't need to fight Hubert more. We fight Hubert enough in Azure Moon, we don't need to fight Hubert more. Um, I don't quite understand why it's here. Um, I will say, I do really like... Don't get it wrong, so I always get these mixed up. Um, Arian Rod. I always want to call this Ferdiad, and I always want to call Ferdiad Arian Rod. I, don't, I, I, I do like Arian Rod as a map. It's just uninteresting, isn't it? I mean, the fact that the fact that you fight Cuba is dumb, but it's really emblematic of this whole map. I just don't think it's very exciting. The most interesting thing is Hanuman and Manuela show up if you haven't recruited them. The problem is that everyone recruits Hanuman and Manuela. So the most interesting thing about this map usually won't show up, which isn't ideal. Chapter 18 is a different map, isn't it? I just think this map's really uninteresting. It might be Blair levels of uninteresting. And I don't mean uninteresting in terms of premise. I just don't think anything that happens in this map is, like, fun. Like, playing the map is... It feels like an Orcs battle. I realise it's got Hubert on it, but it feels like an Auxiliary battle. Like, it, it very much feels like I'm just sort of here, killing some dudes, having some fun, and then moving on. Like, it's, it's just not an enjoyable map to play. I don't think it is Blair, because... I mean, look at what's in Blair. But it, it can go... I, I have similar feelings towards this as I do towards Foreign Land of Sky. Um, I just... I don't have any attachment to this map, like, at all. Yeah, I feel pretty much the same way I do about this as I do about Foreign Land of Sky. In fact, I'll put Foreign Land of Sky lower because I like Petra more. So that map being disappointing, like, hurts me. It's really sad that, like, Petra and Felix are so low on here considering how much I love those two units. This does have some decent rewards, actually. I will I will give you that. There are some cool stat boosters scattered around if you can steal them. What a sour note to end on. We just went through all the Part 2 paralogs, and the highest one is Marianne's here. Hmm. <laughs> um, okay. Marianne's is actually pretty fun, to be fair. Like, I do, like, anything that's above not bad is something I, like, actively enjoy playing. There's actually quite a big gap below Anna. I will say that. I think, like, there's possibly room for an extra. Actually, do we have room for an extra tier? There is. Okay, I'm going to make an extra tier. And we're just going to put these four in here. That's... I think that better represents how I feel about those maps. They're just really dull. I just have no interest in these maps. I think that better represents it. But that about wraps up this tier list. Um, so it's just how much I like every paralogue. If you want to discuss it more, obviously the comments are below. If you're watching this in post. Um, this tier list was voted for by the Patreons. Link to that in the description. There'll be a tier, there'll be a poll currently ongoing to choose next month's tier list, November's tier list. And yeah, I hope you all enjoyed watching.